Hey math fans, Jason Marshall here with an explanation of the brain teaser problem from Math Dude episode 10. In that episode, we started talking about fractions. In particular, we talked about the relationship between integers and fractions and a bit about their numerator and denominator anatomy. At the end of the episode, I posed the question, why can't the denominator of a fraction be zero? To answer that question, let's start by looking at a really simple fraction, like 1 over 1. How should you think of this? Well, in episode 11, we'll go into a lot of detail on this. But for now, let's think about how many times the denominator will go into the numerator. In this case, since both the numerator and denominator are the same length, the answer has to be 1. In other words, if the numerator and denominator both represented the length of something, let's say a pencil, it would take one of the bottom pencils to equal the length of the top one. Okay, now let's look at the case when the denominator is one-half instead of one. How many times does one-half go into one? In other words, how many halves does it take to make a whole? Two. Okay, how about one-tenth in the denominator? One-tenth goes into one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. So the answer is 10. Let's keep going. 1 one hundredth in the denominator. Now we're talking about a tiny number on the bottom. How many of those tiny numbers does it take to make 1? It's 100. The point is that as the bottom number, the denominator, gets smaller, the answer to 1 over that smaller and smaller number gets bigger and bigger and bigger and believe it or not, even bigger. We could keep on doing this for days, and eventually the denominator would get really close to zero. And as that happens, the answer just keeps getting bigger and bigger, moving towards becoming infinite. But here's the problem. Infinity isn't a well-defined number. It's just not something we can work with. So to head that problem off, we can't ever let the denominator of a fraction quite get to zero, or else we'd have a problem. Thanks for checking out this week's Math Dude Video Extra episode. Talk to you next time.